Ultrasound can be a great adjunct for peripheral vein access. Normally our nurses can get pretty good access to the peripheral veins through standard palpations, but sometimes the patient may have an edematous arm, the arm may be obese, you may not be able to feel an antecubital vein easily. In addition, if the antecubital veins cannot be accessed, we may want to access deeper veins of the arm, those being the basilic and brachial veins. Ultrasound provides great visualization of all of those veins. We're going to go ahead and choose the linear array transducer. This is going to allow high frequency imaging to give us really good image quality for superficial structures. Remember, these veins are superficial, so we're going to get, want to get as good image as possible. I'm going to go ahead and choose the exam type. Once I've chosen this transducer, I do have different exam types I can choose from. I'm going to use the exam button to choose the venous preset. Hit select. I've already got some gel at the antecubital fossa. I already have a tourniquet up. So let me now take a look at his antecubital fossa and see what veins we can identify. Here we have the transducer marker here. I'm going to put it to the patient's right. Again, it doesn't really matter when we do vascular axis if it's to the right or left, as long as the target vein is in the center. First thing I notice is that I can probably decrease my depth a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn my gain up a little bit. And I notice here, right in the center of the screen, is an anechoic structure that is easily collapsible. And as you can see, with simple pressure with my hand, this vessel easily collapses. There's no pulsatile motion, and it easily collapses. It is also quite superficial. If you look at the marks here on the right hand of the screen, this is a half centimeter mark, this is a one centimeter mark. This vein is only about four to five millimeters deep. So it'd be very easy to access. Uh, if I'm looking at the screen right now and I put the vein directly in the center, that vein will be directly in the center of the transducer below the skin. If you cannot find anything in the antecubital veins, you may want to take a look at the deeper veins of the arm. So now let's take a look at the brachial and the basilic veins. I'm going to put a little gel, a little more medial of the elbow, a little bit more proximal. I'm going to scan transversely across the arm. I see a large vein here in the center of the screen, which is collapsible. In fact, I see multiple veins. You can put a pretty large catheter into here. You can easily place a 14 or 16 gauge catheter. I will recommend you use a two inch catheter in all of these cannulations. If you use a standard angiocat, you will get a flashback, but unfortunately, most likely the catheter will dislodge. So this, this is a good vein here. If you look around a little bit more laterally, we can see other veins, and we can see the artery as well. Here in the center of the screen, you see a pulsatile structure which represents the artery. If you're unsure if a very small vessel is arterial venous, you can put the color flow on, and we see classic color flow profile of an arterial structure. So we're now scanning in the, uh, just above the antecubital fossa a little bit medially. We have a pretty good image here, just above the antecubital fossa a little bit medially. And we see a few structures here I want to point out. We can see an artery here in the center. Again, when I put a little compression on it, you can see pulsatile flow. Adjacent to that, you can see a vessel which easily collapses. This represents a venous structure, which could be cannulated, but it doesn't look like it's in a great location because it sits right adjacent to the artery. In addition, on the other side of it is a slightly hypochoic structure. This represents the nerve. So if I was choosing a location of, for venous axis, I would not choose this vein given the proximity both to the artery and the nerve. 